Hi. We're recording. We're doing it. Hi, I'm B. It's my podcast. I make stuff. Make her be. Yeah. Coming at you from Chibuktuk and Mi'kma'ki, or you could say it's Halifax, Nova Scotia. You know. Uh, yeah, I make stuff. It's my podcast. Hi, how are you? What's going on? Okay. Uh, podcast number 25. It's my, um, it's my champagne podcast. It's, I'm 25, so it's my 20, in my 25th podcast. Imagine that meme where there's, like, physics happening all around. Uh, and my cat is screaming at the door again. Oh, dear. Champagne podcast. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, it sure is winter. It sure is winter. We're doing it. I gotta get the cat. I gotta open the door. He'll be so sad. Okay, one sec. This happens every time. Yes, winter is... It's doing the winter thing that it does. It's... Uh, we've. I've been snowed in for three days. This is my third time recording this. I've been so sleepy because I've been snowed in. Um, I've been snowed in. I have weird dry patches of skin under my eyebrows. <laughs> I'm constantly drinking water because I'm so dry. Constantly itchy. Yeah, it's winter. That's okay. I've had some big life changes recently as well. Um, I'm closing up my store. It's my, if you don't know, for work I own a consignment store that specializes mostly in vintage. And yeah, we're closing forever. I'm done now. And I'm really nervous and quite sad to be honest, to have a big change, but my heart's not there anymore. I, and it hasn't been for a long time. And I just have to be honest and move on with my life. So that's what I'm doing. And maybe that means there will be lots more time for crafting, lots more time for doing stuff. But yeah, we were open for six years. It's a long time. It's time to... I'm not sure what's next, but I'll figure it out. It'll be good, whatever it is. So yeah, I think we'll just hop into it and I will show you all of the things that I've got recently, which is nothing because it was January. And who buys stuff in January? Aren't we all just like collectively agreement not to buy things? Isn't it just, just like, ugh, too cheap to buy things in January. I gotta hype myself up after talking about my quitting my job. Okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Okay, so uh, what am I wearing? I am wearing this Muji dress. Got a cute little necklace in there. You can't really see it. That's okay. Got my best vest going on. It's my advent calendar from 2022 that I'm wearing. Well, that I used to make it. Got my boob two pin on. Got these nice little popsicle earrings that my buddy got me. Uh, they glow in the dark, which is fun. Uh, and very importantly, I have to show you two things that are very important to me. One is my nails. It, come on, please focus. Oh, here we go. Come on, focus. Focus up. Focus up. Yeah, it's a B plus a Z, because my girlfriend's name is Zoe. And also, I got a spinning tattoo, because I love spinning. And it's mostly healed. That's her. It's my drop spindle. I'm pretty proud of it. I kind of love it. I really just deeply, desperately, I want knit pearl on my knuckles. And I have for a long time. And I'm just trying not to think about it too much. I'm like, my, I'm 25 now. My brain's fully developed. So any decisions I make are with a fully developed brain. So I should get knit pearl tattooed on my knuckles, right? I should, right? I should do that, right? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. That's my outfit. And that's everything, I think, for now. So, let's talk about what I got this month. The first thing I got this month was my advent calendar. It arrived, I think, January 4th. Uh, and you hear me right, advent calendar arrived January 4th. I'm not gonna name the dyer. This advent calendar <laughs> arrived late when I got it. It was like, I think I got it on the 7th of December. Uh, which is not as late as this one that happened, that I got fully after Christmas happened. <laughs> but yeah, it arrived late. And I just don't think, I don't understand why people don't know that shipping internationally takes longer than shipping domestically. Like, I know we're on the same continent, 
but Canada Post is snail's pace. They do not want you to get your packages quickly, but I'll show you what I got. It was a 12 day advent, so lots of lovely fiber bits. The colors are lovely. I truly like, I really like what I ended up getting. I was just sad that it arrived so late. And I was sad that the dyer was so defensive. Like if you mess up and the items that you send are late, like their response was effectively like, I don't guarantee that you can use for an advent calendar, which is like, if you're selling it as an advent calendar, you should get it. Okay, once again, I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm not trying to dunk on the, on the dyer. Things come up, you know, small business is a small business. I totally hear that. But yeah, this guy, just like love, I'm not going to show you everything, but like, I just love these colors. I love this one. I'm like, yeah, that's good stuff right there. That blue, the blue is lovely. Okay. The next thing I got this month was a drum carter. I was feeling real blue at work. And I was like, oh, I'm sad. Why am I so sad? And then I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw it on Facebook Marketplace and it was a lot less expensive than they usually are. Not totally inexpensive. It was certainly still money, but it was brand new, pretty much never been used. Beautiful thing. I'll pick it up and show you right now. But yes, I'm very, very happy with what I got. This is her. This is my drum carter. It's not a giant one. It's this one. Yeah. And so of course I've been playing around and the ASMR of it is it's very ASMR-y. ASMR-ish. ASMR-ish? Yeah, that's the one. It's an Ashford something something it's a mini one but the bats pack a punch like it's a good size so yeah so those are two fiber things i picked up this month oh i also grabbed the uh the ply magazine that has lauren on the cover of it uh i was a little sad it's a sweaters issue and all the all of the designs weren't size inclusive but lauren's was so that's great um i love their stuff i've never knit with their patterns yet but i'm excited to, to do it eventually What's the cat doing? What's the cat doing? So yes, so the first, <laughs> interruption, uh, the first bat that I made, this is half of it, I saved it, but I used a bunch of Merino, uh, Merino, not Cotswold, Merino, Coradale and silk that I had and I made a bat that looked like this you can kind of see like so many different colors in there I believe the pink is also it's BFL I think the silk looks really nice in there but kind of went for like a rainbowy effect so I did about 300 grams of that and I just saved a bit of the bat to show you, but then this is what it looks like spun up. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> I'm really proud of this one. It ended up being about a worsted weight. I like that the silk pieces are quite like mismatched to what's going on in the rest of the skein. I really enjoy like the, the color pops. And I think the Cordell mixed with the Merino gives it the two different staple lengths. And so the Cordell is like a longer staple length, if I'm, I believe so. And the, um, so like essentially the fiber for a Cordell is like longer. This is not true to size. This is not, uh, size on package is the same as in real life. What is it? life size or whatever no but like Cordell has a, a little bit longer recycle than Merino Merino's a bit shorter and so Merino is softer but Cordell is a bit hardier because of the longer staple length and so together I'm like this is soft yet hardy plus the silk is super hardy as well 
I have not washed it and I nor have, I don't wash them. Like I'll wash them all in the summer when it's, when they can dry quickly outside, but I'm not going to like wash them and like have them soak in the house unless I knit something before I do that. But yeah, I'm just so stinking happy with this and I have about a hundred more grams to spin up. So this is 200 grams right here. Like a hat? No. Well, maybe a hat. My, my kind of rainbow pastel hat is coming to a bit of an end. I've worn it for five years now and it's a little ratty to be honest with you. So yeah, that's my spinning right now. I'm also using my Turkish spindle to make sock yarn. Feeling good about that. Uh, and you'll probably see that next because there's not a lot to work with. He wants to leave now. Sir. He's a lot. Okay. On to the next, shall we? Works in progress? Well, this is a work in progress. You'll probably see the rest of it, but I don't know if you need to see the rest of it. And I'm finished. A lot of interruptions today. Uh, I tried to film this on Friday. It's Tuesday right now. I tried to film this on Friday, but... I live in a college town and so all of the university students were out having like a ski party outside in the backyard. There's like 70 of them in our backyard just like absolutely going to town. It was like <laughs> the theme seemed to be like sexy ski wear. Like no one was dressed properly. Everyone was, it was like rain snowing. It was terrible. I was like kids what are we doing y'all? Like anyways I did not record obviously but I got all gussied up for it. I never gussed you up the same way twice. I can't feel dishonest doing that. Uh, yeah. Uh, P.S. I did this while listening to the first book of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Not the whole thing, obviously. It's like 16 hours long. But the last couple hours I spent doing this. Um, and the book was good. I was like, hmm, I'm not a big fantasy person, but I could get into it. I could get into it. Okay, works in progress. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little all over the place today. We're, we're so, I'm not actually, I'm not apologizing. You're here of your own free will. And I'm happy you are. And I'm sure you don't care that I'm all over the place because I always am. And that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, first update is just my hand spun sweater. I actually have a lot more spinning to show you. I'm so sorry. Um, spun up this since I last seen you. I got kicked up too. This is Crux Fibers. Yeah, they had like a limited release of that color. So good. This one is more of pink leaning. You can see this is more of a yellow leaning. And that's more pink leaning. But they're buddies. They feel quite rustic. Um, but they'll look great on the hand spun sweater. And here's the sweater itself. I've only added one more panel since we last chatted. This is the yar the basement yarn. If you don't know that story, you can go back to the last podcast. But when this is finished, I'm gonna look so good in it. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna what the next panel is gonna be, but I do know that it has. I have to split for sleeves now, and I don't want to. I don't want to split for sleeves because when I split for sleeves, I haven't been looking at the pattern. I've just been like going and be like, oh, teehee, this is fun. And so it's been on the back burner because I know I have to actually look at the pattern and read it. And I'm not the kind of person who likes being told what to do from the patterns that I pay for. <laughs> uh, that's actually a lie. I love it when patterns are like, okay, now pick up four and make sure your attention is just like this. I'm like, oh my god, thank you so much. I'm literally not smart, so that's really that's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, and this this pattern is a bit more. I wouldn't say it's like, you know when you read a pattern and you're like, oh, this was made for people who know how to knit. Um, that's not what this is. It's just like less, less holding your handy. And that's okay. I'm, I'm allowed to, not allowed. I can be a grown up about things. I'll be okay. It's fine. But yeah, loving it so far. It is on pause a little bit because, because I don't want to look at the, the injections. Maybe next snow day. I'll deal with that, you know? Next snow, next snow day. Okay, the next thing that is on my list of things to show you, nothing much has changed here. I've added a few more stripes, but this one is definitely in my, I don't want to deal with you right now. This is my Aurora Cabin Shawl. I, 
I say James and Watts, no, but I say Stephen West. It's my first one of his like intricate shawls. It's fun, but it's not that fun. I'm having a good time, but I don't know if I'll do it again. I do love the colors I've chose. I like how intense they are. They're really like, hey, whoa. And so that part's fun. I do wish I had have chosen a less dull pink, maybe like a bit more baby pink and a bit less dusty rose, but that's what my yarn store had, so that's what I went with. But the rest of it is all from Stash, and I was very proud of that. Very proud to use my Stash yarn. Finally getting through it, which is great. That's awesome. Good for me, okay? Good for me. So yes, another project, speaking of, speaking of Stash yarn, this while we're on the topic, this while we're discussing it. I have a goal to knit through. I have lots of lovely sock sets. They're hanging kind of at the bottom. The bottom there. I have lots of lovely sock sets and I just haven't used them. So my goal this year is to knit 16 pairs of socks, which is kind of like a pair and a sock every month, which is totally doable. I can absolutely do that. Do that. I'm trying to do the harder ones first. So the one I'm going for right now is the Cider House sock. This is by Summer Lee Knits. And this is her. Uh, I chose the absolute worst yarn for this pattern because you can't see it at all. It is just a TV static mess down there, but I know in my heart what it is. Um, it was a Leo and Roxy sock set that had the white, the pink, and this together. And I think it was supposed to, oh, not I think, it was very obviously supposed to be like a a play on like a roots sock. I don't know what that's called otherwise other than roots but in Canada we have roots and this is like a classic roots thing so I had to make the classic roots sock and the cider house sock was the classic roots sock. Uh, if we get a little closer you can see the cables. Let me put it a little closer to you. Can you see them now? They are much easier to see in person but yeah they're <laughs> so I am kind of doing a whole lot of nothing with this. But I'm having a good time, okay? It's what I use when I, this is my work project, so I bring this to work when I slow in it on it. Um, the pattern is quite lovely. Like, I really enjoy the top ribbing. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be one of the longest socks I knit. Yeah, and I'm trying to use it all up. So that's why I made it so long. I'm trying to use all the, all the yarn up so I don't have extras and leftovers. That's the goal. I do kind of love this, though. Yeah, it's a Leo and Roxy set. It's super wash merino. And yeah, I'm trying to work through my superwash because I'm not I'm not jiving with my superwash anymore. And that's okay too. But that's her. That's the one. This is I'm like, hello. Uh, anything else to say about you? Oh, just that I do fear. I do fear. You know how there are podcasts. I just seen in Craft Snark. I'm terrified of Craft Snark. Don't talk about Craft Snark. I don't want to talk about it. But I was looking, I was lurking in Craft Snark. And people were like, what are some podcasts that don't talk about petite knit? And I was like, that's so me though. Like, I don't talk about petite knit, but I do just like run my mouth about James and Watts and Summerlee Knits. I just like what I like, okay? And I love Summerlee Knits. I love the way that she does color in her product photos. And they're just well written, okay? Okay? And the whole Tim and Watts thing is self-explanatory. I just like your stuff. Okay. Okay. Take me away. If if loving pattern designers is a crime, take me away. I think... Oh my god, no, I have two more things to show you. Wow, there's so much going on. Okay, so I cast this on. You saw this cast on in my last episode. But this is the Zakuri cardigan. I'm using Knitting for Olive Blood Orange. In this lovely red color. Rock lobster. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put it on. I finished the body. The body's interesting. It's a raglan. It's a, let me hold it up. I'm just flinging it around doing absolutely nothing. Let me show it to you. Uh, it is a raglan design here. And then the it's got a button band that's kind of tucked in. I'm a little worried about the button band. I think it might be rolling if I don't block it super well. But we'll see. And then the end is just a rib with a bit of garter, which I think is kind of fun. It's like a new thing for me. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta start the sleeves on this guy so I don't lose steam, you know? 
I'm gonna do two at a time, I think, just to get her done properly. But hopefully I'll have a cardigan by the next time we see each other. A whole ass cardigan just done. But I love this color. I love this color on me. I have an outfit planned already with it. I'm so excited. Yeah, this is one of those things that it's stock and it's boring, but I just want to wear it. I'm like, oh, I want to wear it so bad. Like, get off the needles. I think I want to do like a cobalt blue cardigan as well. I don't have any cardigans. I don't know why. But I feel like red is such a... I saw on TikTok, and I'm saying this because everything you see on TikTok is true. Uh, obviously. The... But I saw on TikTok the theory of unexpected red or whatever. And it's like you put red somewhere and it just makes everything look cooler and better and more interesting. Uh, and I do agree. Especially with me, some, with my color, right? So I've got these... I'm like pale, dark, dark. So for me, this red is very like, it's kind of like, Mwah, I love you. And I'm like, I love you too. Thanks. That's so nice. Uh, we're best friends, actually, me and this red. Uh, and I'm, well, I sound pretty vain right now. Um, I'm very sorry to sound so vain, actually. I'm going to retract everything I said. Please don't hold it against me. Um, I'm not saying I look beautiful. I'm just saying that this red works for me. Thank you. I have cool undertones or something like that. All that color nonsense, that color wheel stuff, not color, color wheel, color theory, real. Absolutely, yes. But, okay, side, we're going to do a full side tangent here. I hate the, like, summer, winter, autumn, fall. I'm like, no, that's not real. It's kind of real. It's not totally real. It's kind of real, okay? Uh, in my job, people all the time, the, my main example here is redheads. Redheads will come into my store, and they are convinced they're like, they're so convinced. They're like, I'm a redhead. I can't wear light pink. And I'm like, that's not true because redheads vary like in skin color and undertone, like having these blanket rules for people across like vast, um, vast like color schemes of bodies and hair and faces. It's so ridiculous to me. It's kind of like, um, it's like a, blanket statement for your coloring it makes no sense um and also it's all about how you feel right it's oh, well, so first of all it's all to look flattering and so the assumption that people want to look flattering all the time that's a problem in itself right not a problem but like it's like maybe it's like this color and there's nothing wrong with that i'm not dressing to look as flattering as i'm not trying to flatter myself as much as possible at any given time you know i'm just trying to enjoy my my uh my life and in this case, like I like what I like in terms of colors. You're gonna see a sweater that I finished later on that the coloring is not flattering for me, but I love it, so I'm gonna keep wearing it. Um, but yeah, there's just the um, the notion that you have to be as flattering as possible in your colors. It's so silly because it's like, okay, like, okay, oh, okay. For example, black. I look great in black. I hate wearing black. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't wear black. I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't wear black and I rarely wear jeans. It just doesn't feel good for how I express myself. And that's okay. Um, it's about how you feel in something. So yes, anyways, whenever red redheads come into my store, they're always like, I can't. And I'm like, just try it. See how you feel. Um, yeah, because we have these ideas in our heads. And also, also, when it comes to personal... Uh, image and opinion we're so used to relying on what other people think of us as opposed to how we feel ourselves in our clothes um or like what people because you are getting dressed up to present yourself in some way to society or to your home or wherever you're existing um and, and, and to some extent that is the point yes you have to show who you are and what you're up to and what you're doing but it's also like it's literally just for you babe like if you're being professional in your workplace wear what you want if you are not going to work, wear what you want, as long as you're safe, of course. Uh, you know, as long as you're, uh, unless people are going to get mad at you for wearing hot pink at work, then don't do that. But this is my longest tangent ever, and I'll probably edit a lot of it out, but that's picking my bones today. I guess my bone to pick today is that I think that you deserve to wear whatever colors you want to wear. And just because I feel great <laughs> in this doesn't mean I also won't feel great in the incredibly washing out sweater that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Although, this is what a podcast is anyway, so that's my TED Talk. 
if you disagree with me, that's okay. It's literally not that deep. It's just colors. It's not a big deal. It's all good. It's all good. Gotta be confident and happy. Well, before I went on that tangent, is there anything I have to say to you? Just that I want to do my sleeves. I'll get them done. You'll see them next time, hopefully. It's my goal. You'll see this. I'll be wearing this next time. I love saying that because I said that with my Crux cardigan that I finished. And I wore it the next time and I was like, I fulfill the promise. Which I don't often do on this here. What is it we used to say? Beyonce's internet? Yes. On Beyonce's internet, I really fulfill the promise that I make to YouTube. So maybe I'll do it this time. I don't know. I'll get weird about it. Get weird about it. Okay. Oh, I need to do the collar as well. Okay, and then now I'm done. Enough of that. The last work in progress I have to show you is... I really want to make my own podcast um, theme song. Like, kind of Seinfeldy, like But we'll see. This is such a cute Balabini like balaclava I'm making. It's a pattern that has a beanie and a balaclava in one. It's by a designer who I haven't knit from before, but I'm liking the way it's um, presented. I don't know what language, I believe it might be Danish that the language, the first language of this person is. Also, I don't know if first language is the word, way to say it. I believe Danish is the language this person speaks day to day, but it could be different. Anyways, it's, trans it's translated very well and the um, diagrams are only in Danish, Swedish, a language that I do not speak and I'm not trying to be like they're all the same because they're certainly not but it is a northern European language that I can tell based on the strict part of the the way it's presented but I don't know what language it is exactly and that's another rant about God knows nothing. So <laughs> this yarn is from Belfast Mini Mills, rest in peace to my favorite company I miss them so much they've been gone for six months and I was there one single time but they're the best yarn store I've ever been to so this is an angora yeah you heard me angora little bunny bunny situation bunny rabbit fiber it is an angora mohair not mohair angora the other m merino that's the one that blend and it has a lovely little fuzz can you see the little fuzz around it all the halo right here that's all the bunny hair it gives it such a lovely fuzz it'll go on my head like this eventually I'm a little worried because it's looking quite small and I have a massive noggin something about me I have a giant head and I'm like I know I say some things to be comical and for a bit of exaggeration sometimes because I love to exaggerate I really I really do uh, but my head is massive. That is a fact that we cannot deny. This thing is, it looks big on screen. It is 10 times bigger in real life. My hair makes it look bigger, but my hair is pretty flat right now. Like, yes. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, so this is a little small and I'm thinking it's made for someone with a smaller head than I have, but I'm hoping when I extend the ribbing, I can do it a bit thicker than it's supposed to be and it'll look less weird on me, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm working with a variegated yarn, and I don't typically love a variegated yarn. It does match my water bottle quite well, though, hey? Um, I don't like variegated yarns because they look quite fast fashion-y to me. And I'm not trying to dunk on fast fashion. I know people have to do what they have to do, but when I make my garments, I don't want them to look fast fashion-y to me. Um, they look, it looks fast fashion-y to me because variegation really, like, where depending on the size of the like the group of stitches it doesn't look planned at all so it makes it look like unthoughtful almost sometimes to me and when there's more colors that fit together it looks better but long term I just don't I don't it's a personal preference right I don't enjoy when all these colors come together in different ways every time and that can be fun like planned pooling is really fun or like thinking about what things look like like that kind of way like they knit up and sometimes it's like a really fun surprise but I, I wouldn't choose it normally most garments that I make are not going to be very good they'll be speckled for sure I love speckles I love um yeah I do love speckles I love like a bit of like bright colors and that kind of thing 
but I don't love variegation. So it's just a, this is a new yarn for me. Not new, but like not a yarn that I typically work with. Uh, but I still like it. Nothing wrong with it. Good colors, right? This looks like Moon Mist ice, ice cream, which is, uh, it's like a ice cream local to here. It has banana, blueberry, and cherry? Grape, maybe? Oh, there's definitely grape in it. Banana, grape, blueberry, and something else. It's a really weird flavor combo, but everything here is like Moon Mist, Moon Mist. You know how companies are always trying to like be like, nostalgia, here's something nostalgic. In Nova Scotia, Moon Mist is the... Everyone's like, moon mist water, moon mist alcohol. It's all moon mist all the time. The cat is screaming. I'm so sorry if you can hear the cat screaming. I have to let him in again. Up and down, up and down. Anyways, I got my moon mist balaclava that I'll make. I'm not sure if I'll make the matching hat. If I have enough yarn, I will, but I don't think I'll have enough yarn. So it's all good. That's all good. That brings us to the clo close in terms of our works in progress section. Let me show you my finished objects. Dude, you're a lot. Okay, in terms of works in progress, oh no, finished objects, thanks. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Finished objects. I have to show you things. It'll come to me. It'll come to me eventually. Oh, yes. There's this guy. Oh, I'm reaching. Hello, I'm very close to you. Okay. This is the sweater I was talking about that doesn't match my coloring really well. This peach color washes me out. Uh, and I don't always feel good about that, but I do. I love the colors so much. Um, it's kind of mitigated when I have a bunch of makeup on, but when I don't, it's not the move. This is my Slug Core sweater by James and Watts. I wanted to use these two yarns together. This is Penguin by King Fibers in their Melted Surrey base, and this is just a not just. This is a Fleece Arts Handmaiden mohair. Uh, they don't have this base anymore and I bought this yarn because it was the last I'd been searching for this base so much and it was like the last one I ever found so that's what I'm using and together there's some peach in the sleeve you can see there's some peach bits in the penguin colorway so there's some peach I thought the peach would look good together and then this love course sweater yeah I'm working on a lot of things that are quite tedious and small fiddly like heavy thought and this was just a, a pattern and I could just like get her done. So I got her done. And this is the first item on my, uh, what I wanted to make this year that I finished actually. So that's very exciting. My first garment this year, uh, it's got a folded collar. It's, it's just stockinette, just knit up. Uh, it's very soft. And I was a little worried. I see you, buddy. Okay. He's just going to his bed. All right. He's gone. Uh, I was a little worried that the Surrey next to the mohair would be a bit much, but they blend pretty well together, and yeah, I just know that I'll use this a lot, so. I was like, should I make something I'd wear a lot or not? Something that's really interesting to me is for a very long time, when I got good at knitting, I was like, no, I don't really want to knit things with bulky yarn, that's for beginners, but I'm really into bulky right now. I'm really feeling the whole bulky thing. So, I've been rocking that. It's took me about two weeks. It's very soft. It's very warm. Yeah, I'm thinking about wearing I'm like, oh, I love wearing this. I can't wait to wear it again. It's a great sweater. Nice and cozy. Elton will find a seat eventually. He's just knocking things over until then. The next thing, oh my god, the next thing that I have finished is this bunny hat. It's so cute. Come on! It's so cutie pie. I did this in one day during a snow day we had last week. Oh, sir. Yeah, I did this in one day. Do you wanna? Yeah, okay. I bought this yarn when I was 18 and I was backpacking down in South America. Uh, and I think it was an Arequipa, Arequipe, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but I saw this yarn and I was like, yeah, I was like, this is awesome. Like, I want this yarn. So I carried it in my backpack for a month and two months, maybe, like a really long time. Uh, and I made a hat with it when I got back and it was just way too big because I didn't understand what gauge was. 
or I understood, but I just didn't care. I was so lazy with my knitting. Um, and so the hat was too big and it kept falling on my head. And I got a big head. We've established this. So the hat was really big. So I unraveled it last year and it's been sitting around ever since. And yeah, I just wanted to make something I wear a lot and I'm going to wear this hat a lot. I think it's so stinking cute. It's like my favorite thing that I've knitted so far this year. It's so cute. Um, I saw the pattern when I was in New York with my buddy Kat. We were at an ice cream store and it was like June. It was hot. And someone came in the store and they had this hat on. And I was like, um, first of all, did you make that? And second of all, adorable. Love it. What's the pattern? And they're like, it's a bunny hat. But it turns out, I'm pretty sure we actually ran into the designer, which was really nice. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Uh, so I ran to the designer and was inspired by their design. And I made it myself. Uh, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, I have to have that hat. I have to have that hat. Uh, and it's a great hat. I know it's a little kitschy, a little silly, but whatever. I really want to wear it actually with my Zakuri cardigan, the red one. I want to get that. Get that done. Yeah. He is soaking today. That's your buddy. Can you hear him purring? He just wants attention. He knows that my attention is not on him, so he's causing problems. We're going to sit for a sec. He's reaching. He says, don't put me down. Don't put me down. Okay. Gwe Come on. Gwe. You know how, you know how some people have like really chill animals that like hang out in the background of their videos who are really sweet? I don't have one of those. I have a really, really sucky, really tension seeking little rat and he's he's a good boy but yeah there you go he needs attention at all times I'm just reading I'm sorry I'm going to sit here and do this while he does the maybe every episode will have an Elton an Elton situation you can probably skip this part of the video if you want to but I'm gonna tell you a trick that I learned after this that is enough of that there you go head on down okay we're done with him we're finished I say finished the last thing I have to show you is my first finished pair of socks it's so me it's so good I picked this up at this yarn up at Bad Anna's on like the day after Christmas. Um, I told Zoe that people's partners sometimes buy them little like cute Christmas yarn and she was like, I'll buy some Christmas yarn. So this is self-striping yarn from Area 51 Fiber Company, I believe. And the colorway is something about Sesame Street. I'll meet you on Sesame Street, but super, super cute. I love it. I love these socks. They have a pair of pink Mary Janes from my shop that I think they'll look really good with. But so me, you know, the colors so me. Something I want to point out that I'm doing for the first time ever is I am knitting my toes a bit different. So you'll see there's more of a slant. I've got a right and left toe. So this is my left toe. Uh, you'll see the slant's a bit different. I've done more increases on or decreases on this side than I have on that side. Uh, shout out to Freddie who is Buzzy Bee Crafts, who talked about this on their uh, Instagram. And I was like, that's interesting, I'll give it a try. And so far it makes sense because your feet are not shaped proportionally like this, they're shaped like that. So I gave it a shot and they do fit better. So there you go, eh? But yeah, my first pair of socks done. Pretty content about it. And that's everything I have to share with you for today. I think we've done it, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure you'll see lots of good stuff next time as well. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. I am I am so shocked at uh yeah, how many people follow me here now. Subscribers. It is wild to me that there are thirteen hundred people subscribing who saw my videos and was were like, I'm gonna watch that more. I'm like, What? Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. So yeah, thanks for being here. Uh okay, I love you. Okay, bye. Love you, mean it. See you next time.